All right, so I'm going to teach you about the blend tool in Illustrator and how you can use it to make a color palette. So for now, I'm just going to close up my other panels and come over to my rectangle tool. Before I start to draw, And if I was going to print it, I would probably want that to be 60%. So I have 0, 60, 100, and 0. And that will be the color. I also want it to have no outline. So I'm going to select and hide the outline. And disable the outline. Turn it off, as it were. And I'm going to click and drag out a square. And then I'm going to switch to the selection tool, the black arrow. Right, so the black arrow tool is for selecting objects and groups of objects. That's called the selection tool. The white arrow is the direct selection tool. It's for selecting points of objects, whether they're a closed path or an open path, and objects within groups. All right, so now I'm going to hold the Option and the Shift key and duplicate this orange rectangle and I'm going to change the color to blue. So I'm working with contrast, color, color contrast. And you might have a project or a client that has two awful colors that you have no idea how you're going to make a color palette out of and what do these two colors have to do with each other at all. Well, this is a way that you can use this tool. This is the little tool here. It's called the blend tool to create a step-by-step -step blend from one color to another, essentially building a color palette. So both of the rectangles are selected. And again, I suggest you watch and not try to do it while I'm doing it. That's why I'm making the movie. So I'm going to go to the blend tool. I've just clicked on it once. And then I'm going to use the option key. And I'm going to click on the lower right-hand corner of this rectangle. And it's going to open up the Blend Options dialog box. And you can see that there are some options here for spacing. And those options are Smooth Color, Specified Steps, and Specified Distance. I'm going to go with Specified Steps. Currently, I have two squares. And I want my palette, let's say, to be eight colors total. So I'm going to need six more colors. And then I'm going to click OK. And now, without the Option key, I'm going to click on the related corner. So I clicked first on the, up, the lower right-hand corner here. So on this one, I'm also going to click on the lower right-hand corner. And when I release, now I have the steps in between. So it built the color palette, breaking down the orange and red and synthesizing it into a total of eight colors. Now the interesting thing about the blend tool is that this is kind of a complex group in Illustrator. And what that means is if I click on one of these shapes with the direct selection tool, and I don't want to click on a point right now, I want to click on the interior of the shape, and I move it, the rest of the rectangles will follow. And if I move it and overlap it, so back in the day, this is how we used to do shading before there was actually, bless you, before there was actually a gradient tool. So that becomes a palette. Now this is a group right now and I can click on it with the regular selection tool known as the selection tool and you can see it wants to move together when I use this tool. The other thing that's interesting to note is if I go back to the direct selection tool click away and just click on this blue square here and I change its color to something different let's say I use this magenta color and click OK now it's blending to magenta so this is a live blend of color. And back to this bright blue again. OK, so now let's say I wanted to put these into a color palette and keep them forever. I'd come over here to the swatches panel. This is where I can keep and collect color. And I will come down to my eyedropper tool. And as I click, on this, you can see it's going to try to turn the whole blend orange. That is not what I want. 
So I'm going to undo that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and choose Object Expand. And because, as I've already mentioned, this is a complex grouped, it is not showing me ungroup. It's showing me expand because it's like a tiny little database-driven algorithm. So now I expand it, and I'm expanding both the object and the fill. And now if I switch back and select on it, it's still a group, but it's not a complex group. It's just a basic group now. And if I choose object on group, now each one of these is a separate object. So it's object expand, object on group, and as I click each one, I'll see the color here or also here in the swatches panel. And if you notice here, I'm going to move this over closer to my color box on my palette. There's more than one way to do everything in this program, but I can essentially just drag this down and put it in my palette. Now, let's resize this to be large square so you can see that is my little orange square just too noisy out there and if I come back with the eyedrop tool select the color and just drag this down into the palette select the color and again, just drag this down into the palette. You have to be really careful, though, because you can see that this square was still selected, and it turned that color. So I'm going to undo that, okay. you know, or not. Um, I'll select this and drag it down, click away, select, click and drag. I missed one there, but you get the idea, right? So these colors would have probably taken you a really long time. You might never have come up with these colors as a possible palette. And you might not like all of them, and you might not want to use all of them. So I'm just going to go over it again, and I'm going to do a more simplified version of this. So I'll start again with my bright orange, which I have right here now, and make my square. And then using the regular selection tool, I'll option shift drag to make another. And I'll use this bright blue. And then I'll make sure they're both selected. And this is the blend tool, so I'm going to click one time to select the blend tool. Then using the option, I'll click the lower right hand corner. This time I only want to have a total of five colors, so I'll just make the new steps only three because I already have two. And then I'll click in that same spot again. And now I have much more distinct set of colors. The colors are not as close to each other in range. And if you felt like you know it still wasn't really reaching your desired goal, you could select with the sub-select tool, right? This is, or otherwise known as the direct select tool, this orange color. And I could look at the values of this color and say, do I like it? Do I not like it? What's wrong with it? Or I think maybe I need to just minimize some of the magenta. So I'll bring it down 5%. Okay, I can't even tell the difference. And then I'll bring it down to 50. And that is brightening the whole set of colors. And then again, to put these in the palette, if I want to keep them, I'm going to select this batch and choose Expand, and then Ungroup, and then click and click and drag. I really prefer this closer. It's just easier. I can put them over here, let's say. There's the next one. So that would be using there we go. Illustrator's blend tool to create a color palette. Now if I start to undo now, I'm actually going to lose the colors in the palette. So I really don't want to do that because I don't want to throw these colors away. However, if I want to, I can just duplicate this orange one again, okay? And I'll do an analogous blend this time. This is a lot easier to understand because these colors are near each other on the color wheel. So you probably have a pretty good guess of what's going to happen here. You're going to get some nice magenta and red colors in between here. And again, here's the last time I'll use the blend tool 
and I will option click and I'll tell it again three steps in between. I'll click OK and I'll click and now I have an analogous blend. So I hope that's helpful. And then lastly again expand and ungroup. If you were working with InDesign, if InDesign is open, you could simply select all of these and copy them. Edit, copy. And don't think I have InDesign open here. Let's just open it. Shouldn't take more than a couple seconds. This computer is pretty fast. She says as she waits. I might have to edit the video. Okay, there it goes. All right, so I'll make a new file. All right, let's close the welcome screen. And I'll make a new file, file new, document. And I'll click OK. And you can see over here, these are my InDesign color palette. And if I do edit, paste, the colors are in the document, and now they're in the color palette. And if I delete the artwork from the screen, really didn't mean to rotate it, the colors stay in the palette. And they're all named with their values. Okay, that's that.